What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a very special NFL Draft edition of Stay Hot, where we are sitting down with top-notch prospects, diving deep into their college careers, their hopes, their excitement for the NFL, and much more. Today, we are joined by Oklahoma's edge defender, Isaiah Thomas. How are you doing, man? Welcome to the show. Man, I'm doing great. Uh, glad to be on here with you guys, uh, talking about some football and chopping it up, man. Excited. Awesome. Well, Usually when we do these, we like to do a little bit of research beforehand. And we noticed that uh, you had a tweet in 2020. We assume around the time when everyone was watching The Last Dance, where mm-hmm. you mentioned that everyone was in your DM as if you were yeah. the one beefing with Michael Jordan. Right. Was was that like an actual problem that you were having? Were people actually DMing you? Yeah. So, <laughs> like you said, uh, it was during the time of The Last Dance, like you said. And, you know, it was the episode where Isaiah Thomas did make it to the, uh, you know, make the USA team and whatnot. And uh, the next right. thing you know, you know, people are my DMs. You know, you were never worthy. Of, uh, you're not a welcome back to Chicago. You know? <laughs> George, you know? and I, it was probably like 10 or 20 of them. And I'm just, I'm just sitting in my recliner and I'm just like, man, people, people in my DMs, like I was beefing with George. Thought it was funny, you know, <laughs> tweeted it, thought I was going to get like probably, you know, a couple dozen retweets and likes. And next thing you know, I look on my phone and it's just blowing up, man. That was real. <laughs> I saw something similar happen with the uh, the Oscars. There was some other dude named Will Smith who yes. was getting like, I don't know how people can't figure out or do a little bit more research and understand. Right. Who. Especially when his avatar was like a red, like a white dude, like redhead. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, the yes, Will Smith really, guy. Was, or you, who's like very clearly like an Oklahoma like <laughs> football, football player, player in your yeah, head. Like, I guess maybe like, Michael Jordan. He was a two-sport athlete. Right, yeah, yeah. It was like in my header that played for Oklahoma profile picture was me playing football. I, I don't know what – I don't understand it. I don't get it. But you did play some basketball in high school, it looks like, and you were on a team that won the state championship, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so, yeah, I played basketball all four years of high school, won a couple state championships, been to three of them. Uh, Should have won four straight, but, yeah, been a, been a part of a couple state championships, and they just won it again this previous year. Wow. Do you think you could have been the an Isaiah Thomas in the league if you really in the association? I guess if you really put your mind to it, or was football always always the higher ceiling? Yeah, so football was always the higher ceiling. But but hear me out now. Now I was six five, you know, six four. That's like a that's like a guard. That's like a guard in the NBA. And, and I'm more of a big man now. If I was six, if I was six ten, six nine, y'all y'all wouldn't be talking to me right now. I'd probably be somewhere in the uh, <laughs> in the playoff hunt. With LeBron or something, but nah, but yeah, that definitely. Uh, <laughs> if I was taller basketball, I probably would have been my go-to. Fair enough. And you know, based on your Twitter, you are you are a pretty big basketball fan yourself. Yeah. Um, do you have uh, who's your prediction for the MVP right now? <laughs> uh, honestly, it might be Jokic again. But me, I would want Joel to win it just because I like seeing I, I like seeing other people other people win it here and there and whatnot. Just so I would like to see Joel win it. I think Jokic is going to get it though. But that's my prediction. I'm a Miami Heat fan, though. Big time Miami Heat fan. You know, die hard Heat fan. So other than that, probably I want Joel to win it. What made you a Heat fan if you're from Tulsa, Oklahoma? Yeah, so uh, growing up, you know, I, I didn't know much basketball. You know, I just played two, uh, NBA Live and NBA 2K. And at the time, Dwayne Wade, he was like the best player on the game. They had just came off the championship. I'm like eight years old. You know, I want to play with the fastest, best player. And it was Dwayne Wade. And I was like, man, this – this guy's fast, man. And next thing you know, became a Heat fan. Uh, we got LeBron several years later. Then you know, I just enjoyed the you know fruits of their labor of getting bragging rights. So now I just stuck it out with him. You know, uh, ever since he left and all that, I'm still a Heat fan. Bladen, you have pretty much the same line of thinking with being a big De'Aaron Fox fan. Just the fastest, just the fastest guy. guy. guy yeah. <laughs> He's just Possible. the fastest guy. So. Except, except uh, the Kings aren't probably winning a title yeah, anytime soon. The Kings aren't getting LeBron anytime soon, so it's a little different. <laughs> that's the key. That's the key with two K though. Is you just get the fastest guy and you run, you run past the dude and dunk. That's how I got like uh, won an MVP with like Isaac Okoro or something oh my in two K. Uh, <laughs> yes. Just got to get the most athletic dude. And, and yeah, D-Wade was a monster back like, in there. What do you think like the best two – do you have an opinion of the best 2K of all time? Do you have an opinion on that at all? Okay, so I play a lot of 2K. And I don't – okay, so I know people go off like like when, when they decide on what the best 2K was. I know people go off like gameplay and like how certain things was. I go off how good I was. Now, <laughs> I go off that – I was the best at 18 and 17 – you know, 2K19, I was great at. In 2K17, I was phenomenal. So I, I would say my favorite 2K was 17 and, like, 19, that, that area. 
because I go off how good I was. I, I don't care how good the game is. And I, it's great. If I'm good <laughs> so that's, that's how I feel I about it. I guess that's if fair. I, yeah, if I'm great about it, if I'm great at it, then it's, it's a great, phenomenal game. I don't care what people say. But that's, <laughs> that's a good take. Honestly, that's a, that's a great take. Moving on to a little bit of football. Um, yeah. As a pass rusher, is there any go-to move that you have? Like, if you had a signature move, what do you think it would be as a pass rusher? Okay, signature. Okay, so definitely, um, since I'm like a bigger defensive end, you know, physical and stronger, I'm definitely like a long, long type. Like, I start off with a long arm, you know, show a little bit of power, you know, get the get the guy on his heels. Then, I, then when I like switch it up, you know, I put the stab in there. I do a stab club, you know, get the get the hands off it. You know, that's like my go-to two moves. You know, and, and I can say that to anybody, and I'll still try to execute it the best way I can. Because you know, I believe in my ability, so. Definitely me having my frame and size, that long arm power, you know, getting the guy on his heels, some type of power rush, definitely. So that, that'll be like my signature. You'll see the type of pass rush is, is a physical pass rush and it's towards the end of the game, more speed, you know, for this. Are there ever guys where you feel like you do have to change it up a little bit? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, specifically, you know, I can't think of a certain guy that comes to mind, but I think of like certain games and situations where I definitely, you know, had to switch it up and I'm capable of switching it up on. Like, like for instance, Texas game, you know, uh, their, their outside tackle. Um, he was – I was going against him all game. He knew I was coming with a power rush or type of, you know, hand movements to get him. So, he kind of, like, quick set me. You know, he was kind of, like, you know, a short set. So, I switched it up to the spin move on the inside, hit the quarterback towards the end of the game, you know, turnover, we get the ball. I don't know if y'all seen the OU Texas game last year, but that was one of the greatest games of college football last year. It, it was phenomenal. So, uh, certain situations definitely have to switch it up, most definitely. For sure. For, and do you ever switch it up just on purpose, just for the sake of like being a tendency breaker and not putting things on film, like for the opponent to study too often? And how, yeah. how often does that cross your mind? Like, I got to do something just so they know and they got to respect this on film. Right. Uh, or is it always just like in a buy situation, like just in that moment, like I'm just got to do this to win right now? Or is it ever like for the future, like for future reference, you switch it up? Yeah, I do. Because our coach, like you said, harped on it. You know, you, you want to switch up tendencies so that you're capable of other things to keep the other guy on his toes and stuff. So I know uh, we would watch film. You know, I would have a lot of success on certain moves. And coach would be like, you know, try to throw this in there. Because, you know, the next like, other people watch film too. So, you know, sometimes I, I, would, I would throw in a counter in there. You know, I, I would throw in a side scissor, you know, different moves like that. Um, so definitely ten- tendency records, I mean. And once you use those tendency breakers, you can use them to your advantage. Because like you said, the other team, they're expecting me to um, they're expecting me to use a power. So they're going to sit heavy, lean forward, show their arms. Then once I like use my side scissors, they're going to slip and fall in their face. I actually got plays that I made off just tendency breakers. So, man, that definitely I use those. I've seen videos of pass rushers like Aaron Donald. There's a there's a video of him training with knives. Like someone yeah. will like kind of try to stab him and he'll bat his hands away. And I know yeah. that like yeah. I was when I was watching yeah, George Karloftis, uh, yeah. like he is someone who has really good hand fighting and he's someone who trains with UFC fighters in off seasons. Yeah. Is there anything like you do or drills you really like that you think are especially effective in helping with pass rush moves? Yeah, so uh, we had a, uh, my strength coach last year. He, um, I forgot who he brought in, but he would do it himself as well. Him and another guy who would uh, like, like, was like a boxer, like they would train, like use boxing gloves, like they would like kick set and like, you know, like like jab at us or like throw some type of punch and like simply getting their, their hands off you. So, you know, as a defensive lineman, you know, they always, my D-line coach would always say protect your numbers. So in certain instances, he'll try to like jab at your chest like as quickly as possible. And it just trains you and trains your eyes and your um your reaction just to like, you know, size you, so some type of hand movement. So I think the boxing glove, you know, method is just like a jab method of trying to like get into your chest, like, you know, unexpectedly, you know. Not, not nothing that you can predict and whatnot. I think that's a method that I really like, and, and I definitely used to my advantage when I was at Oklahoma. You mentioned the uh, OU Texas game was, you know, probably one of the best games of the past season. Do you would do you think that you know when you had to put in a tendency breaker was that your favorite play of your career, or do you have another play that sticks out where you're like, no, this was the best play I had. Best play I had in my career. Um, I don't think I've had like. Cause like you know, I had like a lot of I had a lot of sacks these last two years. I think I finished with like seventeen in the past two years, and you know some strip sacks and scoops. But I, I I never had that like you know interception, pick six or scoop or score or nothing like that. But I feel like like the best play I had in my career, you know, it was in twenty twenty. You know, it, it was a play that like you know kind of kind of gets overlooked for one because we lost the game, and it was it was like week two or three of the season, so it wasn't like a big game or whatever. But um, it was like it was in the moment. So I we played Iowa State at Iowa State. 
we were down by seven and we needed to stop. Like this is when we were trying to figure out our identity. COVID just hit. We still don't know who we are. And I uh, came off the edge, man. And I was just becoming who I was and came off the edge. And, you know, Brock Purdy, the quarterback, you know, tried to throw it, got a strip sack. We recovered it. And just the whole motion of wave and energy just, just erupted on the sideline. And, you know, we scored that drive. Like I said, ended up losing. But like if I would have had that play in the OU Texas game or, you know, in some playoff game, that would have been like the greatest play of my career. But just because of the game it was in, it didn't. It wasn't my greatest play, if, if that makes sense. So, but I definitely yeah. think that play right there was probably my, my best play. During the whole pre pre draft process, you've been at the combine and the Senior Bowl, and the Senior Bowl is interesting to me because, like, I wanted to ask because they have the the three days of practice and then the game. How do they get? When you play in the game, how do they get that set up in three days? Like you've got all these like teammates you've never met before. Like how do they, what kind of defenses are they running and how do they install that and get you guys ready to play in a game like that in just a couple of days there yeah, that's on top of ask. all the drills? That's funny you ask because I was thinking the same thing myself. I was like, how do I want to play in a game with a bunch of people who don't know each other, a defense, you know, so uh, we actually run their defense, the actual defense. That, so the Jets, uh, the Jets okay. was the, the coach for our team. And uh, so we ran their base defense, like, you know, like, like their, their simple base defense and like, you know, a couple of intricates of like certain things that they implement and whatnot. But it was their base defense. And we meet for like, like probably like a day, like probably like three hours of meetings, like roughly three hours of meetings, and you know, just being so trained to, to understand film and pick up on film, you know, it, it comes easy to us. So I'm not going to lie. Like once you get into the habit of something, like you guys know with your profession, like, you know, some guys might think it's hard to set up stuff like this. Like, I wouldn't know how you guys set up any of this stuff, but, you know, just it's what you guys do. And so it's what we do. It's film study, breaking it down. And it's just lingo. It's just a different, it's a different term. So that's how we, that's how, that's how we set up the defense. Then when it comes to just playing with one another, you know, we go out there on practice, seeing what guys mess well with one another. Luckily, I was fortunate enough to play with Perry on Winfrey at Oklahoma. So we played in, like, we, we were in with each other a lot. So they just see what guys right. work well together, get the defense installed. Then after that, it's just football, so it comes pretty quick. At the Senior Bowl, do you have, like, well, who is the toughest lineman that you had to go up against there that kind of previewed the the draft class and, and the league in general? Who's the toughest guy that you went up against? Toughest guy. Um, What's his name? I didn't get too many reps against him, but he was pretty good. Uh, He played for Boston College. Oh, uh, Zion? Oh, oh, Zion Johnson. Yeah. yeah. Out of, he's yeah. A lot of hype. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a stout kid right there, man. He he, is, he has a lot of upper body strength, and him being shorter, you know, than like the average, you know, six foot four, six foot five old lineman. You know, he, he has that leverage on you, and, and I like him a lot, man. He's like he's just as good as a person as he is a football player, and, and that made me respect his game a lot. And, you know, I, I kind of seen the hype that they had in him. You know, obviously not perfect, but definitely I seen the hype. He, he's he's a good, he's a really good player. You kind of came into your own uh, in the twenty twenty season. In twenty nineteen, you had like two sacks and. 2020 you had eight and a half what do you think changed right. from then that allowed you to uh start producing more and, and start getting after the quarterback more yeah so man i, man, I, I love when, when i get asked this question so it all started you know well okay so the first off if, like I, I i believe in this wholeheartedly you know if you don't believe in yourself i mean who, nobody else will i mean or who else can believe in you if you don't believe in yourself so you know coming off that 2019 season that lsu game was the last game we played you know Joe Burrow, that team, you know, you know, we'll, yeah. you know kick you know, our teeth in or whatever. But that was the most reps I had played in a game because Ronnie Perkins had just had got suspended. So, you know, you know, I was coming off into that 2019, going into the 2020 season with that under my belt. Then we had a new D line coach come in, um, uh, defensive end coach Jamar Kane. Then you know, he just walked in and told me. And at the time, I was I didn't play a lot. Ronnie Perkins was suspended for half the next uh, of the next season of that 2020 season. Then I talked to Coach Kane. First thing Coach Kane ever said to me. Well, the second thing he ever said to me going into spring ball, he was like, "Man, he said, he said you're going into your fourth year." He was like, "I don't care what the narrative is, the, the narrative is about you about not playing a lot." He said, "You know, I, I know who you show me. So whatever I show him, that's all he knows. You know, he doesn't care what happened in the past." Then, um, he, then the thing that really hit me, he said, "Who's to say Ronnie Perkins has to start when he gets back?" And I'm not sure who, if you know who Ronnie Perkins is, but he was like our best defensive yeah. lineman. Yeah, you know, he, he he was a dog, you know, phenomenal, you know. And um uh, and I'm like I'm like either this guy doesn't know who Ronnie Perkins is or he really believes. <laughs> so so you know, we're going into that uh going into that spring ball and every day I'm just thinking, I was like, Man, he's right, like who's to say Ronnie has to start, you know. And then that, from that moment on, I was like, Man, this guy believes in me and he's gonna give me a fair shot. Then like I said in the beginning, you know, if you don't believe in yourself then it doesn't matter who else does. So 
I believed in myself and I would always tell myself I'm here for a reason and, and I'm going to show people that. And, and lastly, what I would always say is, you know, my family sacrificed everything for me to be here. So who am I not to give it my all for them? The next thing, you know, like you said, Matt, you know, I just erupted, you know, eight and a half sacks, 13 and a half TFLs, you know, and, and it was just a dream come true to get me to where I am now. For anyone listening at home, Ronnie Perkins was drafted in the third round last year, I believe, by the New England Patriots. So day two pick for sure. Yeah, really, really good, really good player. And yeah. yeah. In the in the past, Oklahoma has been known for its prolific offenses. And even recently they have as well. Who have you gotten to practice practice against do you think has really pushed you the hardest? Um, let me see. You know, obviously, like you said, man, we've had some great players. I played with some I played with all I played with Baker Mayfield, Jalen Hurts, Kyler Murray, Spencer Rather, Caleb Williams. Uh, hope, hope I'm not missing any of them guys. But, uh, but yeah, so I played with spectacular guys. And I say I'd, I'd go as a, an offensive lineman standpoint, man, because, you know, we had – I went against Orlando Brown a lot my freshman year, and, and I didn't see it in myself. You know, going against him, I was like, man, I, I did not see myself, like, you know, getting to the level that he's going to get at. Or we, I played with Kenneth Murray, linebacker like him. But I, I'd say – I'd say probably Neville Gallimore. You know, he plays for the Dallas Cowboys now. Yes. Ne- Neville Gallimore, he really impacted me a lot, man. He, he seen how, how far I had came to where I am now and where I had started, you know. Seeing the success he's had. I know when I was there, he didn't play as much as he wanted to. Then for him to have the success that he ended up having going there now, man, that, that, that guy really pushed me a lot. Like, as far as a player standpoint, man, that, that guy right there really stood out to me early in my career. Like, a guy that I looked up to and that I could see, you know, possibly being in the same situation as him, just not playing as much, but ended up being a team captain, you know, leading the team in different statistical categories. So that guy right there puts me a lot, man. Seeing when he comes back, I want to be that same inspiration that he was to me with these other guys. And like talking about teammates who pushed you, rushing off the opposite side of you this year was Nick Benito, who is definitely, I think that you guys are a good compliment because you kind of bring the power and he's super fast. So... <laughs> Yeah, he's he's fast as hell as a as a speed rusher off the edge. So, you know, you kind of the lightning and thunder dynamic. What did you learn from him, and what did he kind of he learn from you that made you such kind of an effective duo this season? Yeah. So Benito actually helped me with my get off. Like, you know, obviously, like obviously, I was physical of doing, like physically capable of doing the things, but like mentally, like there would be times that, you know, like I, I'm a guy who likes to, you know, like I, I want to be the best player that I can be with as little as many errors as possible. So when I would rush, I would always be a little more hesitant because I didn't want to jump off sides. And, and Benito, you know, Benito looks like he's moving with the ball sometimes. And I'm like, dude, like, like what? And like, like, what are you doing that I'm not doing or whatever? <laughs> then, you know, he put it in perspective to me in certain situations. I know um, I had a strip sack this year against Texas Tech. And before I had that strip sack, I'm like, Benito, like, like, like I know the cat, like, I know the cadence, like, like, I know the timing, like, but I ain't going to jump it because if I jump it and I get off sides, like, I'm not going to get my ass treated out for you because you told me to do this and that or whatever. You know, then Benito was like, he said, look at the score, look at the time. He said, they don't have time to try and make us jump off sides because, like, it'll put them in a setback on what, they're, like, what their schedule is and whatnot. And he was basically saying, like, you know, like, like understand the situation. Like, you know, if they're down and, and they're down by, like, you know, like 14 plus to 21, like, they need to score. So they, they don't have time to, you know. You know, fake snap it, look to the sideline. He said, it's going to go. So he was like, he said, I'm telling you, bro, you just time, you just do it. Like, you know the cadence, just go. Very next play I was in, I mean, the very next series I was in, strip sack, scooped and scored, and I was blowing kisses to my girlfriend. People thought I was going <laughs> to the bench, but it was to my girlfriend in the audience. So, so this, that's one thing Nick helped me with was just my get-off and, and mentality as far as that. And, and I can say one thing that I that I helped him out with was definitely him setting up some of his rushes, especially uh, in, the, in the stunts that we had. So. You know, in certain instances, you would see me and Nick Benito on the same side when I would play defensive tackle and he played outside linebacker. And, oh, we worked so well together. Just just me helping him disguise certain things to set myself up or to set him up. Oh, it, it worked beautifully. Like, like I would just uh, tell him to hold a certain guy's eyes for a split second or show this way and I'm coming this way. And so me helping him out with certain games, I definitely would say I, I helped him in that situation. Getting into kind of NFL preparation stuff, have you gotten to talk to any current or former NFL players and have they been able to give you any, like, really good advice that you've been able to take away? Like, uh, guys outside of Oklahoma that I've been talking to? Or, like, yeah, or at, got maybe guys at Oklahoma, but, like, anyone who maybe is currently in the NFL or was yeah. in the NFL that you've gotten to work with? Yeah, so, 
one guy specifically that stood out, and this is because I grew up, I grew up a, a Carolina Panthers fan as a kid because I, I love the color blue, you know. So uh, I don't know if you guys know this. It's an old linebacker. His name was Dan Morgan, and um, he was inside linebacker for the Carolina Panthers, man. And I remember I had a like at the senior bowl, we I had a meeting with the Panthers, and you know I'm walking up to him, you know, shaking hands, shaking hands. Then last year I see Dan Morgan, I'm like, you know, it kind of looks like Clark Kent, you know, kind of uh, like he, you know, got you know glasses on, you know, well groomed and whatnot. Then, you know, kind of just shook his hand or whatever. Then we sat down. I was, I was like, are you Dan Morgan, linebacker for the Panthers? And he was, like, kind of shook that I, like, that I would know that because that's, like, you know, like deep, like early 2000s of the Panthers and stuff. So I didn't get a chance to work with him, but that was the one guy who I, I definitely picked his brain a little bit, asked him questions, and, man, it, it was everything I imagined it to be, man. It was, it was really, you know, kind of starstruck in a moment. But that, that was one guy who had a, who had a lot of tidbits on uh, the process in the NFL on, like, just as far as from the same world combine into where he was in the league. When you've been talking to uh, different NFL teams, have they mentioned anything about how they see you fitting into their scheme, uh, things that you might have to do differently than you did at Oklahoma? Uh, so, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, actually, yes, very, very often. Um, yeah, teams definitely tell me, like, you know, we see you doing this and that. And some teams even said they see me, like, doing different things, like you mentioned. Um, I know – specifically when I was talking to the Atlanta, Fal- Atlanta Falcons, you know, they were like, you know, we have our guys dropping the coverage, do this and that, and um, talk to the Denver Broncos. They also they also said the same thing because they run um, – they, they have two, like, stand-up outside linebackers, and they were saying, you know, this guy is our, like, you know, our, like, heavy edge defender, you know, but they see me doing that. But, you know, at certain times I might have to drop and do certain different things. So, um, yeah, for the most part, you know, teams see me definitely, like, hands in the dirt on the edge, rushing the pass, but sometimes the sub package is playing inside. You know, and uh, doing different things because you know my speed and athleticism. So um, yeah, definitely when they talk to me, the schematics of what they run, they see me and they tell me what they see me doing. And some other teams show, uh, tell me and show me what they could also see me doing different from Oklahoma. For sure. And when you're talking to these teams, I don't know if you're even allowed to say this, but is there any that especially have shown you love or or you think you might end up getting drafted by? Uh, you're oh, well, that's great you asked, but I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that. Uh, but <laughs> I just, uh, to, um, yeah, I, I've definitely seen, and uh, you can definitely tell like teams that show like you know a lot of love, a lot of interest, and in, you know teams that consistently reach out, and uh, also that you know go into finer details and you know specifics about you coming down there and what and what you like, what I end up doing and stuff. So there's definitely several teams that have stood out, and definitely teams that show a lot of love and to where I think I could possibly end up. But I don't, I don't take it. You know, too too heavy because I know um, Max Crosby is also signed with the same agency. I'm signed with, and I remember watching a video that Max Crosby was talking about. He said before he signed to the Raiders or whatever, he said he barely had even talked to him, like like barely communicated with them. And I was like, wow, like you know, because like let, let's say I didn't talk, let's say I hadn't talked to the to the Patriots at all. Draft day they call me, I'll be shook because I, I haven't talked like I've talked to them, but not as much as I have other teams. So that that definitely seems show love and interest. And some teams, you know, might just pick me in. You know, been hiding under the bushes the whole time. Yeah, Jair Alexander from the Packers. I remember watching an interview with him, and he was like, "Yeah, the Packers had basically no contact with me until they picked me, and that was even in the very first round." So, yeah, it's yeah. definitely interesting how that works. As how like, I wonder why that is too. Is like why a team would yeah. pick someone they haven't been in contact with. <laughs> I feel like I'd want to talk to them, but yeah, I Thank don't know. You. Yeah, but for <laughs> Max Crosby and Jair Alexander's case, it seems to have worked out pretty so bad. Right. Yeah, it didn't go so bad at all. Well, before we get out, we have a few rapid fire questions for you. Don't think too hard. You know, just fun stuff. All right. First one, your biggest fear. Heights and drowning. Heights. Oh. Yes. I think both of those are very valid. Uh, Next one, your first purchase when you get your first NFL paycheck. Probably a Ram TRX. Oh. Yeah. Nice truck. Ram, yeah. Yeah. I think you're the first person that's ever given like a, a specific, like colors are very common, ant, but most, most of you are just like uh, a car. I don't know what kind of Blayton always nah, falls yeah, off. Which type of, have you thought about it? No, yeah. They, ne- they never know. Yeah. I know what I want. <laughs> yeah. All right. What celebrity would you most want to meet? Drake. hundred percent. Drake. Drake. Yes. Yes. Okay. What's your favorite movie? Okay. That's great. That's a great question. Favorite movie. <laughs> Favorite movie. Of all. Uh, Avengers Infinity War. Okay. That is the, the best, best Marvel, Marvel movie. movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I like you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
All right. What music do you have you been listening to a lot recently? Maybe not your favorite because you said your favorite artist is Drake. So I assume right. you listen to a lot of Drake. But like, is there someone else you listen to a lot? A specific person? No, uh, that I've been listening to. But I, I, lo- I like some R and B and some pop because um, okay, some Adele. I've been listening to Adele a lot recently. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I like to switch it up, man. So some R and B and some pop lately recently a lot. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. And then we have one more. We have this bit here where we uh. We do our favorite ice cream flavors, mm. so we have to ask what your favorite ice cream flavor is, or if you don't have one, a top three would suffice. Oh, I have one. It's it's Ori dough. It's cookie dough and Oreo. So I was training. Sorry, I, I, I don't know how much time we have, but I was training out there in uh, San Diego in Exos, and my trainer was like, I told him like the things I love, and he said, if I love ice cream, go to this place called Handles. A place called Handles Ice Cream. Best ice cream I've ever had in my life. I swore I would never eat another brand of ice cream after I ate it. And uh, they had this flavor <laughs> called yeah, they had this flavor called Oreo. Dough. It's chocolate chip cookie dough and Oreos. You know that that is my one number one favorite flavor. Fair enough. What are your thoughts on lemon ice cream? <laughs> um, um, what? <laughs> 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 lemon ice cream lemon ice that's cream bladen's lemon ice cream that's, that's real that's yeah it's, real. it's not it's not it's real, not real. <laughs> no he's yes, making it's, this up yes, but it's, he says it's, it's one real. of his it's top real, three man. favorite ice cream flavors top three man oh my god but uh I, it's <laughs> awesome the sound of it i think it's disgusting like i was compared to <laughs> my my girlfriend she loves pickle flavored like like snow cones or whatever and and i would assume that it tastes pretty sour and tangy like that so I, i'm gonna get you i'm sorry <laughs> It's a good answer. I, Thanks. No words. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that does pretty much wrap things up. Thanks again for joining us. It really has been a blast having you on. Best of luck in the draft and beyond. We can't wait to see everything you do in the NFL. Again, shout out to Wasserman Talent for, con- for connecting us to these amazing prospects. Yeah. And thank you all for watching. We'll be back with more content here soon. And as always, we will catch you all on the flippity flop. <laughs> <laughs>